Welcome back. You know, as we talk about getting into the real estate market, like buying a home for the first time, that is certainly one way to go. But some people want to get into investing in real estate, maybe without actually buying their own house to rent out. Uh, Barrett Johnston and Chris Garvin join, join us with Cadence Capital. Uh, first of all, welcome, guys. How are you? Thank you. Good. Good. Um, so, you know, with, with you guys property syndication. So first, why don't you explain a little bit about what that means and how you guys help people, I guess, invest in real estate in a little bit more passive way than mm-hmm. going out and buying a condo to rent out or buying a, a home to rent out. Yeah, sure. I mean, basically, we will go out and identify properties to purchase um, with certain return expectations and then pitch the deals to investors um, that don't want to day-to-day manage properties but want the benefits of owning the real estate. And basically, we pull everybody's capital together, create one entity, and invest those funds in one particular deal, and then run the show for them, basically. Yeah, and we take a, uh, a value-add approach. So we kind of we find deals that are performing how they should in core markets of Seattle, core neighborhoods, going in and whether remodeling or changing the management strategy and raising the income on the property, returning that to our investors. Yeah, we're big. We're not just buying a building just to get cash flow. We're going in. We're gutting it. You know, we're rehabbing the units cosmetically, bumping rents, you know, X percent, assuming they're below market. Usually the buildings we go after are massively underperforming where we can negotiate, you know, a good price. What's How big are some of these buildings that people can, I guess, buy? A, it's almost like buying a share of, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So we, we have uh, our smallest prop- property is six units, and then we have a uh, 53 unit. So right everything right in between that range. Yeah, I'd say now we're probably targeting deals in the two to ten million dollar range at this point in time. We started out, you know, four years ago, right at the recession, buying little projects, and now we've kind of worked our way up. We've got private investors, we've got institutional investors. So it's kind of a blend depending on what kind of property we're going after. And so a lot of these, I mean, these are apartments or office space mm-hmm. or they're all all multifamily. We have one mixed use deal that uh, has got some retail on the ground floor, but the rest of them are strictly multifamily. Why would people invest in this in a syndication versus maybe going out and buying their own house to rent out? Well, I think uh, people would find quickly that property management is very, very, very busy. It takes up a lot of time and effort. And so you kind of get the benefits, like Chris said, of, of those returns without actually having to go and unclog a toilet at midnight on Tuesday. So It's always a toilet. It's always a toilet. So many, anyways. Uh, so okay. So then, I mean, you, you, you kind of get the best of both worlds. I mean, it becomes pa- you're you're it's like I mean, you're not really. There's no way you're on call, right? I mean, you fully manage the property, mm-hmm. and but you can still go and see these properties. I imagine. I mean, they're they're out there. Yeah, I mean, we do this for a living. Um, we're going to have a lot better pulse of the market than the average person is, unless they really want to dedicate their life to you know learning commercial real estate in Seattle. Uh, you know, we're definitely seeing deals that the average person is not going to see. And that's because we've been doing it for, you know, five years. I was a broker in this business before syndicating. And so that definitely is an advantage to us knowing everybody in town. But that being said, you can still buy your own apartment building and do just fine. Mm-hmm. You know, our our model is... It just takes a little bit more money than maybe buying a piece of one. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So when you guys say you're going to fix the building up a little bit, what are some of those remodels that you're making? Well, it depends on the on the property, but kind of like what you guys were talking about earlier, these older buildings that have either out-of-date plumbing, electrical, that kind of stuff, we'll go in and fix the plumbing and electrical and then do cosmetic upgrades, new floors, countertops, paint, light fixtures to kind of take the old bland 1980s apartment unit and turn it into something that's a little more condo quality. And that's just what people are willing to rent? I mean, they, they, you guys are really appealing to the renters at that point in time. Right. We self-perform all on work so we can keep our construction costs, you know, probably 40% below what you can hire, you know, an outside GC to do. That's a ma- massive benefit, the average person. So you guys doesn't. actually do do the work? Yeah, we have a, we have a crew of, of workers and we're a general contractor. So, yeah, we have about 10 guys that turn units for us. So we'll go in and put, like, laminate floors in that look like hardwoods granite countertops, stainless steel appliances. So it really, when you're a tenant looking at 10 different buildings, you go into our unit and you see that it, it looks really nice. We hope. 
<laughs> yeah, that, I guess that's that's the key. Uh, yeah. So it sounds to me like you guys kind of have two different businesses going. I mean, you guys are mm. attracting investors, but then you're also trying to make sure that you can get good renters in these apartment buildings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, basically, we are a finance company and a construction company blended and a together. Property management company. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. There's, there's three arms to it, and yeah, we're not just fixing up units to fix them up. They've got to be rented for more than what they are now, or it doesn't make sense to put the money into it. So you guys, you fix up these units, right? And then you get higher rents, which essentially makes the the whole investment perform better. So, you know, that makes sense on that side, but what are some examples of somebody becoming an investor with you? Right. I mean, it started out with us, you know, a long time ago, friends and family, and we kind of just grew slowly. And then we got more traction, more traction, and it kind of just blew up all of a sudden, say, two years ago. And so you can contact us, you know, it's, we have a website, we have, you can find us online. Uh, but yeah, it's a relatively simple process. We don't, we go and find deals first and then pitch deals to people. We don't say, give me your money. I'll go find a deal for you. So it's, it is a process. It's not going to happen overnight, but if you're willing to wait a few months, we can most certainly, most likely find a good project. Yeah. Make sure it fits their investment criteria. What are some of your guys' investment criteria? I mean, how do you find a good project? Uh, it's basically what Barry was saying earlier. We're trying to attack buildings that are well-located, core market Seattle, Capitol Hill, Ballard, Queen Anne. I think we have a building just about every neighborhood now, but Wallingford in Seattle. Um, a lot of competition in those areas, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Yeah. I mean, the market now compared to even six months ago is completely different, much more competitive. You can still find good deals, but they're not – we had the upper hand as a buyer up until just a little while ago. The sellers are really now starting to realize that the market's changing to their favor. So, yeah, And there's a lot of new construction coming online also, but our price point as a rental is pretty significantly lower than the new construction. So we, we have an advantage there. The units look good, but people aren't paying an obscene amount of money for them. So you kind of, in some ways, you end up attracting renters in a different way. I mean, or... or... Yeah, I mean, new construction... You know, one bedrooms can go for eighteen hundred bucks a month. I mean, not everybody. Rents are up, aren't they? I mean, isn't up. it insane what people are get, are renting for now? Yeah. Yes, they. Uh, it is obscene, actually. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not not San Francisco yet, but a couple of years it'll happen. You think you think we're gonna get it to the price points of San Francisco? No, not like tomorrow. But I mean, well, no, this, no, I didn't. I mean, but the city. Was, I mean, look at, half the people will be moving out like tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. if that were to Where are they else they gonna go? Uh, but look at Seattle. I mean, it's landlocked. You got the Sound. You got the mountains. I mean, everybody wants to live downtown now. I mean, the burbs are great. But mm-hmm. if you're a young, you know, young professional working in, at Amazon or downtown, you want to be where that is. You want to walk to your grocery store. You want to walk to your bar restaurant you know yeah a little bit more city living is going on i mean mm-hmm. i you know i live in kirkland i still consider myself a young professional so i won't you know <laughs> give you any backlash for that but uh it, there is an element of people wanting to have that more city lifestyle i mean a, a east coast city you know that where people are not mm-hmm. constantly tied to their their cars all the time mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. people don't even have cars in most of our buildings so you know you can walk if you live in capitol hill and work at amazon you can just cross over I five right there, and you get can to walk work. down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What happened in South Lake Union has changed quite a bit. All that growth down there, it's really got the west slope of Capitol Hill growing. Is that the biggest area that you see growing right now? Core Seattle, or just Capitol. I mean, yeah, Core Seattle, yeah, South I mean, Lake if, Union. Uh, we we focus on core neighborhoods in Seattle. It could be Ballard, Queen Anne, Capitol Hill, Belltown. You know, right around Lake Union is we we try and focus our our investments. We've looked down the south, and it doesn't quite work for our business plan. Uh, but you know, we try to focus on you know where you'd want to live. Yeah. Put that way. Well, guys, we do have to go to break. Thanks for joining. Stick around. We'll continue the real estate discussion after this break. That's Barrett Johnson and Chris Garvin. You're listening to Brashonomics. <laughs> 